All right. Hello, everyone. And I would like to welcome our audience and our wonderful guest speakers uh, to the virtual so MSP CSP virtual forum today. My name is Tamara, MSP CSP lead EMEA at Virtuoso, and I will be accompanied today by brilliant uh, co-hosts and managing partners at Flow Swiss, Bojan Jovanovic and uh, Rito Gisendaner. Uh, Bojan, please, can you share a few words about yourself and uh, also introduce Flow Swiss? Sure, sure. Thanks, Tamara. It's our pleasure to take part in this uh, virtual event today. So hi all, nice to meet you. My name is Boyan and I'm the co-founder and managing partner at Flow Swiss. Um, Flow is actually a public cloud service provider from Switzerland, founded by Rito and me back in 2019 here in Zurich. And yeah, we offer prom premium cloud services with a strong focus on simplicity. So that's a short story. Very good, thank you Boyan. All right, before we start, uh, let me give you a quick outline of today's event. Uh, so today we will primarily focus on practical advice uh, for running a successful cloud business and also defining a profile of a next generation alternative cloud provider. Uh, but I have also prepared several key market trends that I would like to touch upon today and discuss with you and Boyan uh, during the course uh, of our virtual event. Few housekeeping items uh, before we kick off. Uh, we have planned time for Q&A uh, section at the end of the webinar. As we go, you will be invited to participate in a few polls. Please do, as we will share the results with all attendees after the webinar. And this webinar is being recorded. Uh, we will share the link uh, to the recording in our post uh, webinar follow up. And I do encourage uh, all of you to keep in touch and connect with us uh, in social media after the webinar. We will have more uh, events like this in the coming weeks. So please consider to uh, subscribing to our newsletter. All right, I will start uh, with a brief business update and overview for those of you new to Virtuoso. Uh, Virtuoso is a pioneer in virtualization technology with uh, 20 years of experience in software business. We started with system containers and eventually extended our portfolio and solution stack to virtual machine virtualization, uh, software defined storage and a hyper converged uh, solution. Presently, we are number four uh, contributor to, and, and a member of the QMU KVM community. And also a quick announcement, uh, two exciting solutions were released uh, to the market this quarter. Uh, the first one is Virtuoso Linux, a perfect and superior replacement for CentOS. And um, what's interesting about this particular Linux distribution is that it has been powering our virtualization solutions uh, pretty much for 20 years. And what we're doing now is offering the solution to the broader market as a standalone Linux OS that can be run in any environment and is designed to support uh, all standard Linux applications. And the second solution we announced uh, this year is Virtuoso Hybrid Cloud. Uh, this is our end-to-end -end managed cloud offering for MSPs and uh, CSPs. Now, as I mentioned to you, I have prepared a few cloud services trends to share and discuss uh, today. And I would like to start by sharing our learnings and also the statistics that are provided by the DETO in their state of the MSP report. The two graphs here represent the statistics on the cloud services and application trends in 2020 uh, to the left and to the right, uh, cloud services and application trends in 2021. And as we can clearly see, the most demanding services in 2020 were around business continuity and productivity. Uh, the cloud-based infrastructure in 2020 was only on the seventh place globally. Economic uncertainty was definitely troubling uh, for MSPs in the aftermath of uh, COVID-19. And we see that cloud design and cloud-based infrastructure being on top of the list in 2021 trends, along with 
cybersecurity solutions for clients. Now, Boyan, let me ask you here, what do you make out of these trends? Well, uh, this is a very good question. Uh, it's, I mean, it's always the same with the trends, but uh, since the trend in 2021 is clearly moving in the direction of cloud services and especially in the infrastructure as a service area, um, yeah, we will do our best to position ourselves optimally here. Um, it is actually very interesting to see that the trend, trend is strongest in EMEA. So it seems that there is a need to catch up on this topic here. Yep. And um, as a local CSP who is selling both directly to businesses and also via an MSP channel, what are the typical requirements that are voiced to you as cloud infrastructure provider in terms of uh, uh, the type of applications or scenarios that uh, you need to support? Yeah, um, a typical SMB client of ours usually cares a lot about knowing the people behind the cloud company. So the human aspect is in the foreground. In, in other words, they don't want to be just another custom number, what they normally are with the hyperscalers uh, as a customer. So the primary concern is to know exactly who they are entrusting their data to. Uh, furthermore, benefits such as no vendor or provider lock-in uh, because of the usage of open standards, um, the ability to manage their cloud environments with a powerful API, and last but not least, the key benefit is a strong compliance. Um, as an example, uh, five or six years ago, it was sufficient if only the data centers in use were ISO certified. But this has changed in the last two years. Now, almost every customer requires that the cloud infrastructure operator, operator is also at least ISO 27001 certified. So to run a successful on-site cloud service provider business, you have to take care or start to take care of uh, regulatory compliance. Um, for example, some of our customers that deal with sensitive data like insurance or uh, health care industry have the special requirement, requirement that they have to do a two-party audit every year on-site uh, on, on, in our facilities, this, despite our ISO certification. So this is practically unimaginable with hyperscalers. This is probably only possible with them if you are an extraordinary large company. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Uh, great point about compliance uh, requirement, Boyan, and that's actually a bonus point to the five keys uh, to running an alternative cloud business that uh, we will touch upon in just a bit. And uh, so that covers SMB. Uh, what if we look at a typical MSP customer of yours? So what are the key requirements that they voice from FlowSwiss? At least our experience shows that uh, most MSPs um, want the basic or core features of hyperscalers in combination with some, we call it local advantages. Um, let me list a few. For example, one of the most important functions is the flexibility to a strong self-service control panel. So it's not enough to just um, be a cloud provider, but uh, not offering a powerful self-service uh, functionality. Another one is a uh, yeah, powerful API, uh, same way like self-service, but as an API for um, any kind of programmatic integration. Then typical resource scaling options, um, like you know, uh, scaling on demand with the VMs, with, with the volumes, with object storage, and so on. And from the security perspective, of course, virtual networks, so network isolation, and firewalling like um, security groups and similar. Um, and of course, competent support uh, in local language is also of benefit. So in summary, the key is to provide all of these key features of a hyperscaler, but provided by a local trust provider. Yeah, good. And at times also in compliance with uh, the GDPR or like uh, data security policies. Yeah. All right, um, we're going to kick off our first poll now on application and services adoption trends in 2021. Uh, please take a few seconds to submit your answers.
All right. So the second cloud services trend that I'd like to cover today, and we clearly see for several years now, a shift to hybrid cloud adoption amongst uh, enterprises of all sizes. And by the state of Q1 2021, and according to 451 research, 57% of organizations are on board with hybrid IT environments that leverage both on-premises uh, resources and public cloud resources in an integrated fashion. And over half of businesses are already executing or planning to execute on a hybrid cloud strategy. And this is, uh, this is, where, this is exactly where we see massive opportunity uh, for all cloud and managed service providers. And we clearly see that hyperscalers who are dominating the cloud market are on board and are actually uh, driving this strategy now. So we see that uh, growing demand in hybrid cloud environments uh, defines the priority and strategy for hyperscalers in 2021. And in my opinion, 451 released a brilliant report on the cloud performance index uh, this year. And 451 define this hybrid strategy as cloud to ground and cloud around. A two very interesting concepts that um, in a nutshell indicate that first of all, hyperscalers are now actively and with focus going into private cloud use cases, no matter the size. Now even to uh, oriented towards medium size and small size businesses and this, these are the solutions, uh, the likes of Outpost of AWS, uh, which is basically a four node appliance or Azure Arc that allows to export um, uh, Azure resource manager capabilities to, uh, to edge locations. And secondly, CMPs or customer management portals and integrations are now playing key role uh, to ensure a single pane of glass and ease of hybrid cloud strategy execution. And here cloud around represents characteristic of wrapping the a platform around venues to provide a single experience uh, rather than providing the clouds themselves. Now, Boyan, let me challenge you here. Uh, how should a local cloud provider deal with this trend of cloud to ground and cloud around where hyperscalers are now uh, very strong? Well, yeah, first of all, very nice to learn this two new trends like cloud to ground and cloud around. Uh, yeah, it's uh, always funny and uh, to see how, how this involves. Um, yeah. Well, at Flow, we have, for, for scenarios like this, we have developed our own customer management portal with a simple goal of always having the maximum flexibility to respond to different cloud scenarios and trends. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the hybrid cloud or so-called cloud to ground trend is concerned, um, we have two solu solutions which are very easy to implement for us. First, through industry standard VPN connectivity or what you call it, VPN as a service, to simply securely connect to hyperscalers or any other private cloud. The second one, uh, we offer a unified customer management portal experience for customers who use our public cloud and also want to deploy a dedicated managed private cloud on, on their premises. Um, as we are leveraging Virtuoso's VAGI solution in the background, um, which as you might know, comes as a business in a box uh, with the four nodes appliance as minimum. It can be easily deployed on premise and then centrally managed through our customer management portal along with the public cloud workload that uh, we are serving in, in public data centers. So this can be added theoretically in a day or two as a new private region in our portal. And um, actually, as we speak, um, our team is working together with the IT department of a, a small private bank here in Switzerland on exactly such a project scenario. So uh, we are also getting first experience in this area. Good. Thank you, Buen. So in summary, uh, you recommend introducing such services as VPN as a service, uh, plus providing an option of appliance solution placement on premises with the customer that can be 
um, managed centrally via a CMP. Yes. Good. Now, um, having discussed the application and services trends and hybrid cloud trends, uh, how would you define a profile of a next generation alternative cloud provider? Another one. Um, yeah, in our opinion, a profile of next generation cloud service provider looks something like this. Um, first, don't try to compete with the hyperscalers. Uh, second, invest time and energy to develop innovative and new target group services yourself. And third, yeah, focus on oriented services towards the local market. Um, of course, this is only our point of view and does not have to apply to everyone out there, but we think that might work for, for many um, local providers out there. Good. Good. And with this, we have uh, actually covered three points here for running a successful uh, cloud business. And um, I would like to ask you now, what are the latest trends in the cloud industry that you see or um, in your own definition? Yeah, the late, latest trends in this industry, by our definition, are clearly in the area of Kubernetes services. Um, and of course, in tandem with flexible uh, EOS, infrastructure as a service resources. Mm -hmm. So we can, see, we can see that quite clearly from our customer inquiries. Yeah. And how do these trends affect your strategy and uh, cloud vision? Yeah, fortunately, these trends are having a very positive impact so far on our strategy and overall cloud vision. Um, we have indeed invested a lot of time um, and energy and money over the last two years to be able to offer this to our customers. And all this, um, yeah, based on our robust um, infrastructure as a service solution, uh, which is based, of course, on, on Virtuoso. So we hope our plan will work out. Good, very good. So you mentioned Kubernetes, uh, and you have clearly invested in Kubernetes-enabled uh, services like uh, many other cloud solution, uh, cloud service providers. What can you say is unique about uh, FlowSwiss position in the marketplace? Yeah, this uniqueness is, in our case, more um, not really related to Kubernetes, even we just talk about that. What makes our position unique is clearly our Mac cloud service. So some people that may know us or visit our website have seen that. So um, it's it's a kind of Mac OS, Mac OS as a service or a Mac rental in the cloud. So in the meantime, one of, uh, of hyperscalers has also entered this niche business. But fortunately, we are still technologically ahead of them, thanks to our many years of experience in this area. So the Mac Cloud, as mentioned before, in combination with other services like, uh, like infrastructure as a service, Kubernetes, object storage, and uh, platform as a service um, based on Gelastic. And of course, our very strong sense of simplicity in, simplicity in everything uh, we do and create certainly makes, a, makes it unique in the world, if yep. you want. About simplicity, um, your customer portal is uh, a wonderful example of simplicity and lean approach in, in everything, starting from design uh, to customer journey and overall approach uh, towards architecture uh, design. Would you mind giving us a quick uh, overview of your CMP? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm happy to do a quick demo of our portal. Very good. Uh, I prepared something and... I will now. I will, I will stop sharing uh, my screen now. Uh, before I do so, uh, just a quick announcement that we are going to run our second poll now um, as Boyan prepares uh, for uh, the demo. So, thank you. So, I hope everybody can see my desktop now, which I'm mm -hmm. sharing. So, one test, Tamara, can you confirm? Yep, I can thank confirm, I can see your screen. Okay, thank you. So yeah, um, I'm going just to show you a quick demo of our customer portal, which was fully developed uh, in-house by, by our team and with a strong focus of simplicity and the wizard-guided provisioning of all objects and resources. For example, let's create a simple new uh, Kubernetes cluster 
we just click on the wizard button and choose create Kubernetes cluster. As we are operating in two different sites in Switzerland, you can choose which one you prefer. Um, of course, a choice of uh, which configuration for the Kubernetes worker nodes you prefer. Uh, you can define how many worker nodes. Then uh, the network topology is created as simple as possible. So you see immediately, even if you don't have the basic like know-how uh, of, of a cloud-based network um, topology, how it looks like. So you can choose, for example, which internal VPC you want to use. Uh, if you want to make it public or not, you can with one click, with one deselect click, you can make it a private Kubernetes cluster with, without public access. And yeah, so these are like three or four steps in the wizard. Um, then we will do, give it a name, click on finish, and then it will start uh, creating a three node Kubernetes cluster with the managed master node. Um, this takes a few minutes, normally about three minutes to four minutes. And meanwhile, I will also show you how it looks when you want to create other objects like, um, like classical VM um, instances. The same here, the experience is the same. Choose the region. Then uh, we have a choice of different images from traditional Ubuntu, uh, traditional Linux distributions like Ubuntu, CentOS, and so on. Windows can also be easily uh, selected with included license, which is also covered without any additional actions needed. Then some contain container distributions, viral distributions. So we try to make it super simple for the customer. And um, when we go now here, the next step, the configuration, the same network topology that you can um, choose from. So the same experience and you can select an SSH key, use some cloud init data here and click on finish and it will deploy it in the background. So super simple. Um, then the same works of course with all other objects like load balancers, volumes, a few clicks and you're there. So this is just a short demo. Then uh, maybe, yeah, um, what's very important to mention here uh, all the actions and all the items that you see here, um, these are all Virtuoso VHI objects in the background. So we're just using uh, our own customer portal, but in the background, we are addressing and using all Virtuoso resources like virtual machines, virtual networks, volumes, elastic IPs, and so on and so on. So it's it makes our life much easier to create simple and 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 flexible um yeah services on top uh, of our customer portal then um yeah the thing with the mac cloud um i'm happy to show you how it works for example in our customer portal to deploy or create a new really physical apple mac device apple mac mini so it works the same way you just click on a plus button, you give it the name, you choose between three configuration. One is uh, very popular and already out of stock. Very soon, I will also offer the M1 based Mac minis. And then, yeah, you choose it, go here, the same here. So we build our own uh, VPC like um, network topology for bare metal. So by default, each Mac mini is securely isolated behind the firewall with same benefits like we have with our uh, compute, with the virtual machines, with uh, like with elastic IPs, with the internal IP security groups, and so on. So it works exactly the same way. And here you give it the password, and it's going to create a new machine. The back. Let's see in the meantime if Kubernetes is running. Uh, it's still in creating. It's not done, but yeah, it looks as soon as it's ready. Uh, that's the status I'd look like. You can, with one click, download the kube config, in, in, import it in a Kubernetes tool of your choice. Um, 
upgrade possibilities given and of course some um, Kubernetes management features which are um, known by Kubernetes uh, engineers. So same time we see here that the new Mac mini is ready uh, running the latest version of Mac OS Big Sur and we have option here to open the console. So as you can see, we are directly on a physical Mac. And for example, stuff like this is very cool as last demo action, as you can see here. And then we are done. So you just have seen how uh, a virtual finger button uh, just worked out and per turned off um, a Mac Mini. Yeah, so that was a quick demo. I hope you liked it. <laughs> Back to you, Tamara. Thank you. That was pretty cool, especially with the virtual <laughs> finger. Thank you. Great demo. Let me go back to um, screen sharing. Presentation. All right. So um, in summary, I would like to go over the five keys to running a successful cloud business. I have prepared an overview of the points that uh, you boy and covered today. Uh, would you mind going over these points for us? Yeah, I'm happy to do that, sure. Um, so some points, as you might heard, we already mentioned during, during the call. Uh, during the webinar, so I'm happy to give it give some more um, uh, details around it. Um, first of all, yeah, do not compete head to head with the hyperscalers. I think you all agree with me, but we will probably never be able to compete at their level. And honestly, uh, we I think we don't have to, or don't need to. So instead, invest time and energy uh, in developing innovative customized solutions that address the needs of your local target customers. And for example, what suits the German market doesn't necessarily work out in Switzerland. So this is, for example, a, a, an, an experience uh, from, from our business side. Uh, thirdly, yeah, focus on your target customer segment and market. You don't have to be uh, one, one size fits, fits all. In other words, less is more, yeah. Um, then differentiate yourself by highlighting your unique value proposition that sets you apart from other providers. Uh, in German, there is a saying, do good things and talk about it. So point out what makes you unique and talk about it. And yeah, the last thing is in our, in our DNA, uh, simplify everything. Um, we believe that a simple and lean approach in everything you do will help you shine in the long run. Um, this concerns the technical as well as all sales oriented topics. So simplicity always wins. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you Boyan. So with this, uh, let me uh, have a quick look at the questions that um, the audience submitted. Uh, there is actually a very good question from Mikhail uh, uh, related to the demo that you showed of the CMP. Uh, thank you, Mikhail. Uh, the question is uh, why the decision was to develop custom uh, portal. Boyan, can you take this up? Uh, regarding our custom, uh, custom portal? Mm -hmm. Why okay. the decision was to uh, develop it yourselves? <laughs> um... That's a good question. Um, the main reason that we uh, is that we haven't found anything that meets our needs. Um, there are a few solutions out there, but as I said, none of them really excited us. So we will have to have to make a lot of compromises uh, with all these um, these commercial solutions. The um, the other reason is uh, the, is the maximum flexibility that we gained to. Um, uh, so be able to react to cloud trends and our own ideas and approaches. So flexibility is the term. Um, so those are certainly the two most important points, but there are of course many other topics that uh, make our lives much easier today. And uh, we believe that 
having everything under control and a flexible solution in background like Virtuoso and, and other um, makes, um, makes us maximum flexible to adopt to new trends and create even some own um, services. For example, in, with Kubernetes, uh, we are using compute instances from, from, from Virtuoso, but we are using our um, like custom Linux um, distributions for that that make Kubernetes much more secure by default with uh, some kernel updating um, by them own and so on. So you have a lot of flexibility. So that's, I think that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, there are a couple more questions to you related to a um, couple of operational questions. Uh, there's a question about the orchestration layer. Uh, so um, can you comment on that, Boyan? Do you use your, your panel for orchestration layer uh, or uh, you use any other uh, solution for that? How do you, uh, how do you um, administer your infrastructure? Um, for like the, I will call them classical um, objects like virtual machines, volumes, um, elastic IPs and all the stuff, we use uh, virtuoso orchestration in the background. Um, Kubernetes is different because um, we are, yeah, we're using or we are setting on a, on our own approach. So we decided to go there to do our own thing. And at the same time, we had to create our own orchestration layer for, for Kubernetes so that it works and operates the way we want it. Mm -hmm. For Mac yeah. bare metal, if this was the question, for Mac bare, bare, Mac bare metal, because it's really our own unique service, we of course have an, our own uh, orchestration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good. And there is a second question from uh, Amrit uh, regarding hypervisor clustered options. So I guess uh, it's a general question about uh, infrastructure as well. Is it a clustered infrastructure that you have? Oh, yes, of course. I mean, um everything you cannot have uh, less than for example four nodes with, with vhi so it's uh, by default clustered and of course you can make it even more complex or more advanced if you have um like sites within one region uh, to have like um, uh, one cluster operating here the other there so to reduce some impact if one uh, local site or zone, the zone is the, the right term, fails. So um, this is something that uh, Virtuoso offers and we are using it, yes. Good, good. Uh, thank you, Boyan, and thank you, Amrit, for questions. Uh, another question from Joe um, is related to management of the services. And the question reads as, does Flow Swiss provide full management for, the, for these services? Boyan. Um, I guess the question is related to like if we provide managed services on top of um, on top of like operating system level, Kubernetes level, and so on. So we don't do that. Um, we could, of course, technically we have we have the skills, but we are not fo focusing on this. We are working with different partners here in Switzerland and Germany that um, have. Yeah, the skills, the necessary skills, though they are like focused, or specialized on that. They have teams for that. They have all the yeah experience in, in this. And, and of course, they have the customers that also have other needs, not just to, to use a, a specific cloud provider with uh, hosting their data somewhere, like uh, operating local printers and, and some small sites. So. We, we are not able to cover this. So yeah, we, we, we have a strict uh, like line there. We, do, we just do hosting and work with partners on everything on top, like managed services on Kubernetes, Windows, Linux, and so on. Mm -hmm. I hope this helps. If it's, if it's not clear enough, please, yeah, ask. Yeah, so it, to simplify, you basically provide cloud infrastructure to managed service providers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. that work then directly with enterprise so we have customers many customers are actually uh, it guys that um, are doing it for years but they don't 
uh, want to operate their own cloud. Probably they could, yeah, but this is not in their focus. So they like have a preferred choice of, of providers. Some of them use just us, some of them use us and AVS or Azure. So it, that depends always on, on the company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. So um, with this, I'd like to thank you for all the questions that you submitted, the ones that we didn't uh, answer today. We will definitely follow up on um, after the webinar. And we will also share with you the results of polls that we were running throughout the webinar. Boyan, thank you for our discussion today. Always a pleasure to speak with you. And uh, thank, you. thank you everyone for attending our uh, virtual uh, event today. So with this, I'd like to wish you all a great rest of the day and I will see you at our next event in the coming weeks. Thank you. Um, thank you, Tamara, for organizing it. Thank you. Thank you.